This is Junk Dump, and we're continuing work on an Oldsmobile 455 that's been bored 30 over. Uh, the piston rings were checked. Um, the piston gap, the ring gaps were then checked. And then uh, the piston rings were installed. And now, after they were indexed, I am now ready to install those inside the block. So you want to set your crank at bottom dead center. Get your piston and rod assembly. Set them over. I set them over in the block, as shown here. Then I'm going to grab the piston ring compressor. Now there are a bunch of different types of piston ring compressors, and everybody's got an idea of you know which ones work best for them. Um, this one I wouldn't say works the best for me. Um, in fact, I find it kind of a pain in the butt. But it's a good one to have around if you're doing a bunch of engines because you can just quickly grab. It's kind of a one-size-fits-all. Um, but as with many one-size-fits-all thing, it's one-size-fits-all, but it doesn't quite work great on anything. So um, you can get by with it. I certainly did this time, but it causes a bit of a headache. So once you tighten it around the piston, and get those rings compressed within it. You want to make sure that it's really squared the block and then grab a hammer, um, a rubber mallet, um, and start tapping it into place. And that one I got lucky. It, it went pretty easy. So right now what I'm doing is cleaning off the journal. Then I'm going to add a tiny bit of oil and remove the excess. And what we're doing is making a slippery surface for the plastic gauge. Now if you've never used plastic gauge before, it's basically a very specific thickness tiny little strand of what feels like wax and what happens is when you then when you put it on your crankshaft and you put everything in place and you tighten everything down what it's going to do is crush that um, and depending on how wide it is when it's crushed down it will measure the tolerance and how much space you have in that groove for the oil which serves as your bearing See, a viscous bearing works different than a regular roller bearing. Um, so the two surfaces don't typically touch. What they do is they ride on a film of oil. So you want that channel to be the correct thickness so that the oil gets in there and works the way it should. All the time you're doing this, you want to make sure you don't spin that crank. If that crank turns, it's going to smear the plastic gauge, and then you're going to get a reading that's not correct. That's me using the hand hammer again. It's a tool every mechanic carries around. You want to put oil on the threads. Anytime you have a torque specification, it's always... Um, a wet torque spec. It's always with the threads lubricated unless it says it's a dry spec or or specify something else. Now you torque these into place. And then I'm going to remove the, the, the cap. Now you see that green smear. That's what's left of the plastic gauge. Measure the thickness of that and it tells you 
what kind of space you have in there. So when I measured mine, it was in spec. So I moved on to cleaning off the plastic gauge. They say you can leave it in there, but I do a little bit of cleaning it out. Now everybody has a different theory about whether or not to use some kind of sealant. For me, I use some thread lock on them. It's not a super tight specification on those. And uh, I would hate to have those come loose and spin a bearing. Your next step is going to be cleaning the bores out for your next piston. Actually, it should already be clean. What I'm doing here is just adding some lubricant on it. Um, and it doesn't matter. You can put oil down there and that's fine. The rings will actually scrape it down. So you don't have to worry about putting too much again. But as far as Loctite on the threads go, um, like I said, everybody's got their opinion on it. Um, it won't hurt. Um, many, I built many engines using it and many without. Um, and it's just my preference. A lot of people say you can't get the torque right. That's incorrect. Um, I've tested that theory with uh, torquing them down with and without um, with the oil and then again with the thread lock and both ended up torquing um, within less than a foot pound of each other so there's no problem there as long as you keep your threads clean you'll be fine Seems a bit out of order, but I'm going to show you now the how I check the gap in the rings. Um, this is my second compression ring. So you just gently put it into the bore, and then I go grab a piston, and I use a piston to seat it down probably about an inch or so down into the bore, and the piston helps keep it nice and uh, even. Oh. 
for me that time it was uneven so I'm just gonna give that another shot there and that looks good now you grab your feeler gauge and you check your gap using your feeler gauge Just when you start to feel some good drag, that's going to be the feeler gauge that gives you the best indication of what the gap is. So in my case, that one didn't have enough drag, so I grabbed the next size up. That one had a good amount of drag, so I know now exactly what my gap is, and I check. It's within tolerance. Now I'm going to go install that on the piston, index those rings, and set it up just like I did before, and then install this piston.